Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope that you can hear me clear and well. Um, the presentation today is specifically to introduce you to the Turnitin program and to have a summary for you at hand based on the UNISA Turnitin Student Guide, how you're going to log in, how you would be submitting and how you are going to view your originality report. May I just advise that let's go through the whole presentation before you start asking your questions because I do believe that most of the questions that you might have would be answered through the presentation itself. Then of course you also have the option to consult the student guide as well as the list of frequently asked questions um, for any other queries that you might have missed during the presentation. Personal direct queries can be reverted to the UNISA Turnitin team on the relevant email address, which we will also show to you at the end of the slideshow. Okay. Now, first of all, what needs to be understood is that Turnitin is a teaching tool. So it is there to be used between the supervisor and the student to walk the road with you as a student through your time of study at the university. Since UNISA does not tolerate plagiarism, it means that you must make yourselves aware of the contents of the policy for copyright infringement and plagiarism, which is available online. Make sure that you also understand exactly what is meant by plagiarism. Okay, It is not merely just copying your friend's work or somebody else's work. It can also be um, an infringement on uh, um, ideas or um, patents that are pending, so you need to be very careful in this regard. So to start out, I just always include in the presentation this um, summary or definition from the Merriam-Webster's online dictionary, what it means to plagiarize. But in essence, to plagiarize is a false representation of the origin of the information. It means you are lying about the specific content of that piece of information that you are presenting. The library has a host of information on plagiarism. There are many um, books and um, other forms of information that you consult on plagiarism. I'm also sure that your supervisor and your relevant college or department would be able to advise you in that specific regard. Now, Turnitin is a web-based tool. This means you do not require any installation of a program. You simply go to the internet and you go to the website itself. Our intent at the university is to encourage originality with Turnitin. And in this whole process, we prevent uh, plagiarism and therefore build our academic integrity, which is the value that is added to your degree that you achieve from UNISA. Okay, your access to turn it in. As a registered UNISA MND student, you are automatically enrolled in an online formal UNISA Turnitin class. Okay, so this is not an online class that you're going to attend. It is simply a space on the internet where you are going to submit your work. When you are enrolled in the relevant Turnitin class, you will get an email confirmation which comes directly from the system. So the Turnitin email that you will receive will say no reply, turn it in. So that would be the confirmation of the class that you've been enrolled in and you have the advantage that you stay within that class for the duration of the study. So you do not need to be enrolled another time. If you continue the study in the following year, you continue within the same class. You will also then get a welcome notice from the UNISA Turnitin team to confirm again that you have been enrolled in the relevant class. It provides you with easy steps on how to log in for the first time, how to access Turnitin online and has attached to it the student guide the specific UNISA Turnitin Student Guide. The tip here is that when you go to the internet, always type in turnitin.com. Do not try and Google it. Google might take you to a ghost site or it might take you to a UK site where it will not allow you access. The best browsers to use for Turnitin would be Firefox or Chrome. Alternatively, you could use Safari and Edge. Please do not use 
Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is not supported. Going to your website, when you, to sorry, to your web browser and you open the website turnitin.com, in the top right hand corner, there is a login button. You will go straight to the login button. There is no need for you to create an account or purchase a license. UNISA does that for you. So you click on the login button. Next, it will show a pop up window where you would enter your My Life email address. On this slide is an example of a My Life email address. So it means your student number at My Life unisa.ac.za. That is the format that you need to use to log into Turnitin. It requires your My Life email to be active. If you have not yet activated your official UNISA My Life email, please do so as soon as possible since you will not be able to use Turnitin without that. You are going to use the same password that you use for my life email, you will also use for turn it in to log in. Now, when you log in for the very first time, the program might need to verify you just to make sure that you are the correct person trying to access the specific profile as your profiles are confidential within turn it in. So it might not accept your password. You simply click on forgot your password. This little line just below the password box on the login window where you can click on forgot password and you will follow the on screen instructions provided by Turnitin. It, it will follow with three steps. It would send you a link to confirm through your My Life email and henceforth after you have confirmed your My Life password for Turnitin, then in future you just simply log in without any hiccups. Now, the files that you are going to upload in your class home page on Turnitin, you will see that there is a list of what we call in the program assignments. But for you as M&D students, they are indicated as being proposals, chapters, etc. For your proposal, you have a couple of options. You also have a couple of options for your chapters. When you are going to upload, do make very sure that you are selecting the correct option to upload. If you are doing your draft proposal, then you click on proposal draft to upload. If you are doing chapter two, then you click on chapter two to upload. Your submissions are permanent within the program that is done to protect your work, so they cannot be moved around. So you have to select the correct option when you upload. When you're going to upload, you have the opportunity to select directly from the computer that you are working from, be it on the hard drive or from a memory stick in that computer. For those familiar with Dropbox or on Google Drive, you can also use those options to retrieve the file that you are going to upload. The program will also then show you a step where you need to confirm that you have selected the correct document. It will also assist you immediately to make sure that that specific document is acceptable for uploading. This whole process happens in under two minutes. And once it has accepted your file, you will get an on-screen notice to say that you have successfully uploaded. The program will then immediately start processing the document and it will send you a digital receipt straight to your My Life email. Just a few lines to confirm what you have uploaded and where it was uploaded. That short digital receipt can be forwarded to your supervisor to indicate to the supervisor that um, you have submitted to turn it in and then you and your supervisor can liaise regarding the originality report because it is very important that your supervisor analyzes the report before you make any revisions to your document. Now, what you are going to upload, you are required for every document that you upload that you have to include a title page and you need to include the bibliography or the reference list. Okay, 
The title page is there to protect your authorship. The bibliography is there to protect the content and to show the sources of your information that you have utilized within the document. So the file size has to be less than 100 megabytes. The maximum paper length that you can submit is 800 pages. If it does happen that you write an extensive thesis and your thesis exceeds 800 pages, please drop us an email to the Turnitin team. Just include in their heading, my thesis exceeds 800 pages and we will assist you with the submission. No submission must be divided. It must always be a comprehensive submission, all inclusive. Title page with the content as well as the bibliography. In your submission, your images can be included. Any tables you might have used or formulas in the document stay in the document, just like you would have presented it normally to your supervisor. That is how you would present it through Turn it in. It means you do not have to email it separately to the supervisor. Uploading it to Turn it in will make it available to your supervisor as well, and then you can both view your originality report online. Now your submissions are permanent, as I've mentioned in the previous slide. They are there always within the program, and that is to help make sure that nobody else in future tries to plagiarize your work and gets away with it. Okay, so your submissions are permanent. Do make sure that you select the correct copy and the correct option when you upload. Okay. When your document is uploaded, what, ha what happens to it? Turn it and takes it to the database. And within the database, there are four different repositories and your document gets compared to the content within these repositories. So it will match up any text found in your document, which is also found within the database and will highlight that specific portion of text. The information is then compiled into what we call an originality report. Please take note that it is not a plagiarism report. Don't call it that. The program cannot say that something was plagiarized or wasn't plagiarized or that a specific person committed plagiarism or not. It is only through proper analysis with your supervisor where it could be established if plagiarism is present in a document or not. Due to the comprehensive nature of the originality report, it may take up to 24 hours to complete your report online. So you upload and you close turn it in. Then you can go back later in the day, log in again to see if the originality report is um, ready. Um, that would be fine. Let's say if you just submitted one chapter, um, it could be ready within a few hours. If you've submitted a whole thesis or a whole dissertation at the end of your study when you are ready for examinations, then that might, might take longer and I would advise that you log in only the following day to view the originality report. Okay. Now the content that Turnitin is going to highlight within the originality report, which is used, which is used to compile the different percentages in that report, is based on non-original content. For instance, if you quoted a person and you have given due credit to that person, then that portion of the text is not original because somebody else said it. It is not your own words, but you quote it and you gave due credit to the person who said it. Then although that it is not original, that is not plagiarism. Okay. But if you simply copied from another person without any credit to that person, even if it was paraphrased and you did not give credit to the original author of the information, then that would constitute plagiarism within your document. And that is why the program will only match for you content which is not original and it will compile a similarity index. It does not 
give you a plagiarism percentage. It gives you a similarity index. What does it find within that specific index? It will find anything that was copied directly from another source. It will find discipline related terminology, names and titles that you might have used within your document. Direct quotes, as I've mentioned in the example, would be picked up. Um, you might find that certain items in your bibliography is picked up or citations that you might have made is picked up within that specific report. Therefore, again, I wish to emphasize that it is only through the proper analysis by your supervisor that plagiarism can be identified. There might be incidental plagiarism due to the nature of the research. Remember that you are a researcher in development. You are learning how to consult sources, how to interpret them, how to represent them in relation to your specific research topic. And this whole process through Turnitin assists so that you can deliver the best work possible in that regard. So do consult with your supervisor before you make any changes and follow the necessary advice. You will not have what we call conflicts within your originality reports against your own work. You are in, in the clause in your NISA on Turnitin protected. So when you do your draft and your supervisor has given you advice in that regard where you should need to improve, maybe paraphrase more, consult more sources, or maybe you were overutilizing quotations and your supervisor advised to reduce um, the number of quotations that you use. You would put that advice into your original document, rework your document, and then come back to turn it in and you will upload your revised work to the program and it will not identify with your previous submission. So it, in other words, it means the program is not going to accuse you of plagiarizing yourself. So you can upload your draft, you can upload a revision and then you can upload the final document. Okay, but please use your submission options wide, wisely since they are not limitless. And therefore, we have given you the opportunity to upload every chapter separately. So once you've done your chapter, you can upload your chapter to turn it in. So by the, when you reach the end of the study, all of your chapters would have already gone through turn it in and uploading your final document would simply be formality. Okay, then on the following slide, I have cut an example from an originality report to show you the similarity index with the breakdown on the right hand side. There might be a slight delay in the connection. Can someone just kind of advise me if you can see the slide originality report view? Yes, it is visible, Erica. OK, thank you. Um, OK, so when you open your originality report, now everything that I've said up to this point is explained in detail in your UNISA student guide. There are images of the different windows with arrows to show you exactly where to click. So you have to click on your percentage to open the originality report and then you have to click on the similarity index to unfold the match overview on the right hand side. Okay. Now in this example, you will see that I've circled the 43%. That is what we refer to as being the similarity index. The only thing that that 43% tells you is that 43% from the content of the specific document is not original. So it does not mean that it was plagiarized. It simply means that portion is not original. But that percentage is not what is important. What is more important is your individual matches. And since UNISA does not tolerate plagiarism, there is no cutoff percentage. 
There is no percentage that would say this or that is fine. So you could have a document with 10%, but if there's plagiarism in the document, it is going to be unacceptable. But you could possibly have a document with 15%. Then and the, after analysis, it is found that there is no plagiarism present within that document that could be acceptable. So do not work to try and reduce the percentage. That is not the focus at all with the program. You need to express your voice within this research. And that is what we need to see within Turnitin. And when you do that automatically, your overall index is going to be less. Now, for the individual matches in the column on the right hand side, you will see there for number one, it says it is an internet source, it shows you 17% and it gives me a website address. For this example, I used Wikipedia, although I trust that every MD student knows that that is not a scholarly source to be used. This is merely an example to illustrate to you how the program works. What that number one means, that means it is the source where Turnitin finds the most matches. In total, 17% from the content of this document matches that Wikipedia page. It is color coded in red. Number one is just always red. It doesn't mean that it's bad just because it is red, or it doesn't mean that when it is green that it would be fine. It is only an indication of a match to a specific. On the left hand side, you can see that there are certain lines highlighted in red, and they are marked in front with a small block which says number one. That tells you anywhere that we you would go within that document where you see red highlighted text marked with a little number one, it matches number one. The same goes for number two. Number two in this example is pink um, in color. It shows 14%. It is another internet source. And in instances where it finds a match to that specific source, it will highlight it in pink and it will mark it with two. Now, herewith, I give you a guideline because your individual matches need to be less than 5%. That is the guideline throughout the institution. Obviously, if you are doing a doctorate study, you are contributing to the body of knowledge. You are bringing new knowledge to the specific field where you are busy with your study. So we would expect a small percentage, one or two percent. If you are a master student, you are acquiring knowledge within this field. You need to prove your knowledge within the specific field in general. So there we might see, let's say, three percent, for instance, or in some cases there might be four percent matches. But your matches need to be less than five percent, even if they were fully quoted. It has to be less than 5% for an individual match. If you use more than that, it infringes on copyright of the other person's work and therefore you need to be very careful. If there is a specific author that you are very fond of, use different articles from that specific author. Find another person who also published on that specific topic who is going to support your your argument or the statement that you are making. So the originality report most definitely must be interpreted by your supervisor. Since your supervisor has the necessary knowledge to guide you on how to present the research that you are doing. Again, it is not going to be necessary to change every single line within the document. That is not why it goes through Turnitin. It only, the color coding is only to alert to certain matches. For instance, if it picks up subject terminology, that is not going to be a problem. It only shows that you have learned the terminology and that you are getting familiar with the way that certain 
items are being addressed within in the research study. Therefore, you need to ask the supervisor under which conditions a certain match is acceptable or would not have been acceptable in that specific instance. Your acceptable percentage, remember, the Turnit, uh, sorry, UNISA does not tolerate plagiarism. I'd like you to remind you of the fact that your similarity index does not have a cutoff point. There is no percentage that will say your work is fine or not fine. You need to look to the content of your work and address the content and present that as original as possible. On this slide, I have just included the summary of the explanation post that your individual matches need to be less than 5% per match. Now for support. For support on your Turnitin account itself, you can write an email to turnitin at tunisa.ac.za. Please note that the Turnitin team can assist you with your account, the login, if you've forgotten the password, or if there is a concern in viewing your specific clause where you are going to upload. But questions regarding the content of your originality report need to be addressed by your supervisor. Then if you have any concerns or difficulties with your My Life email, you need to drop a note to mylifehelp at unisa.ac.za. All communication with the university should come via your My Life email account. Also to the Turnitin desk, you need to send your queries using the My Life email account. That also assists us in verifying you and your status within the program and makes it faster to assist um, with your specific query, as we know that your profile is then active on the My Life. Of course, if you need additional information on the content on plagiarism itself, I have included here a website from plagiarism.org on preventing plagiarism when writing. It is a very nice summary how not to accidentally step into the trap of um, plagiarism. It is at the end of the presentation. Um, so I think if there are any um, extra questions that people have um, asked within the the Q&A, um, I can address them now.